Hello, hello. If you have seen my videos from the past couple of weeks, you will know that I've been going through a bit of a process with my streaming and recording setup. And I feel like I'm constantly in that process, but you know, we eventually have to say I'm done for now. And I feel like I am now done for a little bit at the very least. I'd highly recommend watching my last two videos before you watch this one, just so you can like follow the whole story as we go. But this isn't required to be able to understand what I'm going on about in this video, which is talking about how you can color grade your live camera feed through OBS without having to take it into a separate software. So if you're live streaming, for example, and you need to be able to have the color grading there in real time and you don't have any pre-recorded footage to take away and edit and then you can color grade it, this is the process for you. So my last live stream, I was like in real time going through the color grading options for live camera feeds in OBS. There are two ways to do it. And the first way is you can go in, select a filter and then do your edits on a base level like contrast and brightness and shadows and all that. And there with the little sliders that you have in the OBS software as a filter. I'm going to show this clip from the stream so you can just follow that along because that's what I did in the moment. Color correction. R10 HDR PQ color correction. This will probably have to change on the basis of like every single time I do it. <laughs> Increase saturation a tiny bit. Just a tiny, tiny bit. But like, then that makes my skin look even more red than it actually is. Mm, zero, I'm gonna zero it. What if I do the contrast? So that might help. So if I've got zero there. And then I increase the contrast. If I keep it at like 5, 0.5, then that might help too. Why does it take so long to just troubleshoot the most mediocre things? I feel like that looks good. If I just increase the contrast by like 0.5, then it comes out better. I like that. I do. I'm just going to experiment with the other ones. So gamma. Yeah, I don't like that. Didn't think so. Zero that out. If we increase the brightness. Yeah, I thought that would happen. Zero that out. Hue shift, this is gonna make me look either really pink or really green, probably. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it, it looks cool. Let's not act like it doesn't look cool. It's cool that that's even possible. But I'm not out here trying to look like an alien. <laughs> Actually, wait, where was it? Where, where was it? I actually really like this color combination, even though I know it's not like gonna work at all. Like the yellows and the purple, like I kind of vibe with that, but no, no, zero, zero, zero. <laughs> zero and then if we do the opacity like i don't have anything under here well i do actually i have like a couple i have a couple things under my layers <laughs> um but we need full opacity because i'm not here for anything else so we've increased the contrast by 0.5 in obs and i feel like that might be the end of the process. <laughs> and then you'll notice that my footage now does not at all look like the footage that I have from that live stream because I have made an adjustment since then. I have now added a LUT, which I know it's a lot. I force myself to say LUT. I always say loot because like, I just don't like it that way. Like how I say bokeh when technically it's bokeh, but I added a loot LUT thing since then. I made it. I made it in another stream that was very, very short. And we're going to go on to capture one where you see I have a screenshot of my camera as it's set up currently and I'm going to edit it. And I'm focusing a lot on video editing recently, but I've not actually done a huge amount of photo editing for a while. So I'm going to try not to get overexcited and I'm just going to play with my settings as I see fit. So I do like a good bit of contrast. I am very pale. I also feel like it's a good day to do this because the first day I had my camera set up properly. I had really bad psoriasis. Like my psoriasis still isn't great, but it was like really bad and really red and inflamed and like scaly. And I have this terrible habit of trying to grade for the grossest bit of my face because I don't want my psoriasis to look so obvious, but then the rest of my skin actually ends up being really desaturated. So although I've still got like a little pink going on here, you can kind of tell, I know that I have a more realistic skin tone that I can work with now so I can grade for that. So we're boosting the contrast a little bit, really like contrast in the situation, especially because in HDR it makes the darks more gray and the whites more like blah, like it's all really bland because it's putting free exposure levels and smushing them together. So we want to really pull out the darks of the darks and the 
whites of the whites and we would do that by getting the contrast back don't want brightness because that's reducing it saturation maybe only just a smidge i don't want to make myself look all red but just like a tiny bit of saturation i'm mainly focusing on skin tone because i'm pale as a sheet and then i can adjust all the colors elsewhere later you can also adjust skin tone in the color grading of this tool but i try and avoid it now this is the high dynamic range section so this is like specifically focused for hdr footage so highlights are we bring them up anymore no not all the way sometimes you just take stuff to the extreme to actually work out what you're adjusting and looking out for when you change it i feel like the contrast helped it on its own but if we just do 10 and shadows now the shadows is kind of my hair but i'm mainly focusing on these bits back here because i don't want the shadows to be too overpowering i like the nice contrast minus 10 again okay the whites not got many actual whites in the shot but i feel like they look good for now if we just go up by five blacks the blacks really affects my hair and i don't want that but i do want a little bit for this backdrop here the actual backdrop itself isn't pure like dark 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 black it's like got a little bit of like visible visibility in it so i'm just gonna go really minimal if i were just editing this one photograph i could spot the big big cursor if we were doing this one photograph and editing it then i could spot reduce certain areas but the idea of a lot loot a loot uh, if you're trying to do a custom lot then it applies universally across the frame because the idea is that it's an ongoing color thing it's called a lookup table so the the software is looking up the color in relation to the standard template and knowing what to adjust so we can't do like spot selection it has to be universal i feel like clarity is something that you can't apply to a lot but let's see Oh, no, I don't like that anyway. I just want natural. Like, you could do maybe a little bit in certain style situations, but no, for this, I just want default. Let's not do anything with that. Candy haze. Okay, now let's see if we're going to do any individual color grading here. There is the skin tone one, but I'm happy with the skin tone. I'm just going to start off with these colors here. So the blues. Oh, the saturation just a... Hmm, oh, that's a little too much. Got to be really mild with this. Oh, the saturation just a smidge. And then do I change the lightness as well? No, don't like that. Don't like that. We want it to stay backgroundy. This is really sensitive. So I'm gonna go ten, and then bring the lightness up ten as well. I feel like that balances it a bit. Now we add the next color, which is this sort of purpley shade. It's really light purple. I'm trying to avoid affecting the color of this because this is like perfect. Because this is like the perfectly lit area on my jacket. And then avoid this bright pink. It's different to this purple, but it's a narrow field of view for the color here. You can see so. Again, I'm just going to up it by 10 and then the lightness by 10. Okay, and it sort of makes it stand out a bit. If I uncheck that, where else did it change? Oh, it did affect my jacket a little bit. I don't hate it. Maybe if I just reduce the lightness by 5, better. Now, if we do the side by side, that is so much nicer. I get all of these adjustments I've made in this project. I copy them. So there's a function here to copy the whole canvas style. And then I go into my other project where I've got the look file. And this is the lookup table as it exists. Apply everything. So then if you look at the side by side, that is how I have adjusted it. And now I have to export this in the same format as I imported it. LUT is short for lookup table. So basically the difference between these two methods is when you are going and applying a filter and then using the slider methods in OBS, then that means that you have got your camera footage, the data has been reconciled in OBS, and then you're processing changes with the filter. Whereas a LUT is like a filter that how when you go on Instagram or any other social media, it asks, do you want to add a filter? Then that's a LUT. It's just like, don't call it that because then people would be a bit more confused about what it's meant to be. People understand the term filter more. So a LUT is a pre-made filter that you custom make yourself and instead of applying changes to sort of reconciled data that is then more processing power and has got less control, it's actually in real time interpreting the data from the camera and then putting it through a sort of screening process so it understands that this number equals this color and if you add a different LUT, then this number will equal a different color. And that applies to absolutely everything on 
the camera feed. You're not just adjusting one section of it, like all the whites, you're not making the whites whiter, you're not making the darks darker, and then doing that all as a separate process. It's just, this is how colour is interpreted from the sensor to the individual, and it's got a single individual table where it processes that data before reconciling it into the final image. That's me getting into as layman's terms as possible, because I don't really know how to describe the, the numbery computer science, I'm not a developer. <laughs> I'm actually considering offering custom looks as a software in my shop. I haven't set it up yet. I'm not dead set on it. And it's because the way looks work is because it interprets X as Y in the end situation. If you then have a LUT and you expect that end result and then you change what X is. Like for example, my setup is a little bit cursed in a way that I have done to myself because I set my desk up in front of a window because I like being able to look out into the street. I can see the corner of the street, there's activity, there's people moving, there's cars. And I like to be able to see the sunlight. All the other windows in this flat face building. <laughs> And I wanted to be able to look out and like do my distance vision because I spent a lot of time looking at my screen and my optician was like, your eyes are perfect for staring at the screen all day, which means my distance vision sucks. I only take regular distance vision exercises. So I stare off into the building across the way where there's definitely squatters and I can see them hanging out in the window. But I'm a little bit too blind for that. So I don't really, I just see movement. <laughs> But because of that, that means my setup has ever-changing light sources. I have my key light here and I have a little lamp here and then I have my nebula projector and my little um, tube light back there. But ambient light, I turn off the overhead to prevent like the loss of contrast, but then the sun comes through at random regular intervals and I can't really control if I'm going to get a blast of white light in the middle of shooting. So that's sometimes why my my setup will look a little different throughout the shooting process. So if I were to then make a custom LUT, <laughs> if I were to make a custom LUT for an individual client and then it starts coming out differently, that runs the risk of a lot of complaints because they're like, oh, this photo doesn't look the same as this photo. When actually they took the image in an entirely different setup location, possibly a different device that like speaks in a different language and color profile, like science. So that's a risk. I could just put the disclaimer on there, but I don't know how valuable the service would be because people buy look packages all the time and preset ones like as a downloadable file and they're really popular. But the clientele for that is like newbie videographer, photographers, people who aren't colorists and aren't comfortable with color grading and color profiles and all that stuff generally. Whereas I feel like this would be a more direct to consumer option where they send me a sample picture in the setup they expect to have the whole time and then I would send them back the 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 LUT um, file. <laughs> I'm like forcing myself to say LUT now. Uh, I would send them back the LUT file and maybe like a little tutorial video link on this is how you set it up in certain situations. I'll actually show you what a LUT is because I got stream footage, but let's see. Show package contents. This is where I'm really scared of like messing something up midstream because I'm literally using the software as I'm doing this. But if I search in here for LUT, in contents. There it is. So these are all the preset ones that the software comes with. So this is where you can see like the different ways it interprets color. That one's quite fun. Posturizing is quite fun. I don't think I'm going to do that. But if I go through all these, you'll see the different way it interprets light. But then this one I made custom is night mode. So if I go against original and then the one I made, you can see it's a bit more vibrant, a bit more saturated, a bit brighter of oh, clip posturize. And like, I've got a really concentrated dark corner, but less stuff is interpreted as the dark sections. So that's what I'm sort of working with. I'm gonna try going through this in real time. So if I got my R10 here, filters, this is what I'm using right now. And the path is to the one that I set here. So if I do original and apply it, this is what it would normally look like. But if I browse and go, I'm going to try a couple of these. Posturize, then that looks freaking horrible. That looks awful. Uh, not made for this setup, obviously. Red isolated. I haven't got a lot of reds. Uh, just my face. Great. Thanks for that. I'm actually an incredibly pale person, but my psoriasis makes me have like scaly bits and it's all gross. Black and white is different to grayscale, which I find is interesting. Also horrible. And uh, now I'm going back to my pretty one that I put work into. And this is me, yay. This is like the closest to real life as possible. That's what the options look like. I just want to talk through the process and explain in OBS what you actually need to do. Yeah, I think that's the end of my point. I just wanted to go through and talk about how color grading 
has been a bit of a journey for me the past few months. Like, as someone who's been making videos for like 12, 13 years, <laughs> I am kind of embarrassed that this has been a real sticking point for me for a while, but also it means that there's always room to improve and now I can like show this off because I mainly didn't have reason to learn about it because until recently I didn't have a camera capable of actually doing these things, <laughs> like producing good data to work with. And now I have a HDR camera and I'm having a lot of fun with it and I just wanted to share that knowledge with you. Christmas soon. Merry Christmas. I'm gonna go now. I'm actually trying to finish edit recording this and do a bunch of contract stuff and my bookkeeping before I leave for Christmas. So I'm gonna go now. Goodbye. <laughs> Make sure to subscribe. <laughs>